the cases per lakh population is amongst uh, the lowest uh, in the world as far as India is concerned, if you compare to several countries across, as is shown in this slide. Similarly, uh, the number of deaths per lakh population is also amongst the lowest in the world as far as India is, is concerned. And, and this uh, finding is actually <coughs> corroborated by the uh, zero surveillance which we have uh, undertaken to monitor the trend of this uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection transmission. Now, what is a zero survey? A zero survey, we collect blood samples from a general population and test them for IgG antibodies. And if the antibody test is positive, it means that the person has been infected in the past. And what do we expect from these zero surveys? We expect to see the percentage in the general population, who is at a higher risk of getting infection, which are the areas which need more contained efforts, which need to be strengthened. And the objective is to provide a scientific guidance from time to time. And that is the purpose of uh, this, uh, one of the, the very early surveys that we have done. And multiple surveys will be done as, as we go on uh, to guide. And, and similarly, we have been providing the scientific evidence uh, either through the uh, National Task Force or the Joint Monitoring Group to the government uh, which is uh, the, joint, uh, the National Task Force Chairman is uh, Dr. Vinod Paul, and the Joint Mon uh, Mo Monitoring Group is Chairman of the DGHS, and we've been providing scientific ev evidence. So now let's come to this uh, zero survey. So this was the first zero survey conducted in May in collaboration with the state health departments, in collaboration with the uh, NCDC and the WHO, and basically it had two parts. The first part was to estimate a fraction of population to be infected with SARS-CoV in the general population, and that was uh, the that is the part that is completed at the moment. And the second part is to look at the prevalence of this uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection in um, uh, containment zones uh, in hotspot cities, and that is ongoing as we speak. Now the data was collected, as I as I mentioned, we took it a written informed consent and ethics clearance, and three to five ml of a venous blood was taken, and then this uh, sera was uh, evaluated for the Ig antibodies by the ELISA test. And this ELISA test is also being made available to the states to carry out uh, a sera survey in different uh, uh, groups of individuals uh, within their states. Now, in this the the part one of the survey, which is complete. We had uh, was a population-based zero survey in, se in which several districts were studied and divided into four groups, and and in each group, whether it is zero prevalence by RT-PCR or zero to five, or five to ten, or more than ten percent per million cases uh, in in different districts were divided into four groups, and 15 districts were in each group, and 400 individuals were studied from each district, and then from each uh, village or urban area. Uh, we selected 10 villages and 40 adults, and every household one, one adult was studied. So we actually studied about 83 districts uh, in the country, and uh, number of households that were visited were 28,595, and we were able to collect the blood samples uh, and uh, the data from 26,400 individuals the results were that uh, uh, we found that about 0.73% of the population in these districts showed a prevalence of past exposure to uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. This means that the lockdown and the containment measures have been successful in keeping it low and preventing rapid spread of this disease over the last three months as we speak. However, it means that a large proportion of the population is still susceptible. And which were the individuals which were higher at risk? Risk was slightly higher in urban areas, 1.09 compared to 1. And it was higher in urban slums, nearly 1.89 times higher than rural areas. But the good news is that the infection fatality rate was very low 
that was 0.08% uh, as far as this 26,000 individuals was uh, uh, looking at the population. The infection in the containment zone were found to be high and variable, and, and this is still ongoing, and this data is still being looked at. So, so in conclusion, I would like to say since a large pro uh, uh, proportion of our population is still vulnerable and susceptible to infection, we have to, we have to work on the non-pharmacological interventions such as physical distancing, use of face mask, hand hygiene, cough etiquette, and urban slums are, are highly vulnerable for the spread of infection, infection, and the local lockdown measures need to continue as advised by the government of India, particularly in those uh, containment areas, and they have been successful up till now in containing them. And the high-risk groups uh, of our population, that is the elderly, people with chronic morbidities, pregnant women, children below the age of 10 years, they need to be particularly protected, and efforts to limit the scale um, and spread of the disease uh, will have to be continued by strong implementation of containment strategies by all the states, and the states cannot, and I emphasize here, the states cannot lower their guard and need to keep on implementing effective, effective surveillance and, and containment uh, strategies uh, for uh, uh, um, preventing the spread of this disease. 